And I teach technology classes in addition to my business classes at the college I'm at, and this, but this is the first time I've actually tried to read my notes from one of these things, so it'll be interesting. I'm very grateful and uh, grateful to be at this conference and gratified to see so many of you here. Uh, my name is Scott Gordon. I teach at a small college in Northern California. And in my spare time, I'm president of an organization known as Fair Mormon. I have three things to cover in my remarks today. First, what is Fair Mormon? Two, secondly, why are we interested in sponsoring this conference? And third, do we have any big announcements you need to know about? I think you can take the hint on that. So what is Fair Mormon? Fair Mormon is a group of volunteers who help provide accurate information and faithful answers to help those who have questions or are struggling with their faith, and to help those who have friends or family members who are struggling with their faith. We provide answers to questions about Mormon history and doctrine, approaching those issues from a faithful perspective. Sometimes when many members of the church think of church critics, they imagine the groups that sit outside Temple Square and hold up signs. But the truth is, those particular groups don't have much impact on most members' faith. But what we don't often see is our family members and our friends Googling or Facebooking information about the church that, accurate or not, sometimes is quite damaging to testimonies. Quite frankly, we're an organization who provides information that many don't pay any attention to and don't care about until they have a son or daughter or even a spouse who's leaving the church. Then they find they need us desperately. So why are we interested in this conference? Just recently, there was a young couple in my stake who left the church with the claim the church was anti-science. Of course, this simply isn't true. There's a study published in uh, the book Saints and Scientists, A Quest for Science, Religion, and Harmony by Dr. Richard Wooten, and it claims that Utah is the top U.S. state per capita in scientist production and has been for over 60 years. And within Utah, the Mormon population produces more scientists than does the non-Mormon population relative to their numbers. Mormon scientists assert overwhelmingly that they are strong or very strong believers in the key beliefs of Mormonism. In various studies of education and church attendance, 88% of LDS scientists say they are active in church. Now, faced with accurate information, I can't say whether that young couple would have still left the church, but at least it would have removed their excuse and perhaps would have forced them to re-examine their actions. I have an even more personal reason to look forward to this conference, as my father was a biology instructor for 35 years, and he taught me many things. And my 81-year-old mother still finds Scientific American to be her favorite magazine. And my technology just went weird, so, but I'm okay, I'm back again. <laughs> so, um, obviously, my father and mother had a great impact on my life. I think I was the only kid in seventh grade who had pointed a tree and say, look, there's a Pseudosugum enziaceae. <laughs> and then I would say to my dad, which of the two lakes are going to swim in today, the oligotrophic one or the eutrophic one? If you're wondering, eutrophic means green and oligotrophic is blue, but you know. I did not go on to be a science major but instead now teach business and technology classes, but I will always value what my father taught me through science. I learned that science teaches the art of asking questions, and that forever changed my life. I listened to a high-altitude biologist from San Francisco State University uh, speak who was studying spiders up on Mount Everest, and I wish I could remember his name, uh, but I can't, I'm afraid I can't, but he told the story of of being high up on Mount Everest, one of, the, one of the high camps, and not being able to sleep. So getting up at two in the morning and just crawling out of his tent and sitting there in the stillness of the air of, on Mount Everest and just enjoying himself as, the, as he was looking at the stars in the still air, just completely removed from technology and everything around him. And as he s sat there high up on the mountain in absolute stillness, he suddenly heard honk, 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 and he's going, what? And he looks around, this is two in the morning, mind you, and he, and he looks up, and there he sees a flock of geese, a flock of geese. And he watches this flock of geese, and they fly straight over the peak of Mount Everest, over the top. 
So this brought several questions instantly to mind. First, why were these geese flying at two in the morning? Secondly, why were they flying over the top of Mount Everest and not going around? It seemed like it would make a whole lot more sense to go around. Maybe that's where you get the expression bird brain, because don't, I don't know. So. <laughs> and third, why were they honking? What was it, some radar range finder? You know, honk, 20,000 feet, you know, I don't know. But why were they honking? And what does it all mean? Just as science attempts to identify the appropriate questions to ask about life and to seek answers, so also religion is, ask, is all about asking the right questions and seeking the right answers. So when I heard this idea for the conference, I thought it was a fabulous idea. So my third item is, does Fair Mormon have any big announcement you need to know about? Of course, this is very self-serving, but since I have an audience, I want to do this. Um, since 1997, we've been operating under the acronym FAIR, which stood for the name, the Foundation for Apologetic Information and Research. Of course, we lost most people by the third word in our conversation. So as of August, we're now doing business as Fair Mormon. And after much work these past few months, we launched just yesterday our new website with its new branding. There we go. This is especially important because we have a, what we'd call a mature internet presence, which really means we're just really old. Um, we were on the internet before Google and, or YouTube even existed, but that means we have thousands of pages of information that was grown organically and was very difficult to use. And for all you non-organic scientists, if you use the term grown organically, that just means really confusing. Um, so I had to show this off a little bit with our web page. We have Fair Mormon Answers. It's a wiki with the largest database of faithful answers to critical questions. I don't know if I can get this to... And if you click on that one, you get different things like online primary sources, responses to common critical criticisms, responses to critical media, a topical guide, responses to critical books. We have an annual conference, which we will have on August 7th and 8th here at the Utah Valley Convention Center. Again, there we go. We have YouTube videos and audios. See, unlike Dan, who just kept repeating his, I actually have pictures of my website, so. <laughs> we have a bookstore that has a, a, a big selection of books, study aids, and DVDs, and our one of our books, Shaken Faith Syndrome, Mike Ash is in the audience here, the author of that book. You want to grab him, I think. This is what the bookstore looks like. We have a, a place where you can ask questions of our many volunteers. Some of the volunteers are here in the audience here today. We have study aids. And of course, like Dan, we're always looking for contributions. Uh, we do want to thank Roger Nicholson, Richard Miller, and Trevor Holyoke for making sure our website uh, got up and going yesterday. Uh, again, I want to welcome you to the conference. I hope you enjoy it. And thank, I want to thank Dan and the Interpreter Foundation for giving me these few minutes to speak. So thank you very much.